three-day music festival, the school's prom. Musicians from all over the country will be performing at the Royal Albert Hall in London, including orchestras, choirs, jazz bands and steel bands, like the one from Harrow that was here last Thursday. Performing tomorrow is the Northamptonshire Concert Band. You had their fanfare written by their conductor, Alan Sutty, at the start of the programme. Well, here's an extract from the festival overture by the Russian composer Shostakovich. <laughs> Absolutely marvellous. I spy with my little eye a string player, the only one. Polly, why are you the only double bass string player here? Well, that's because in orchestras, stringed instruments normally play. And because this is a band, it's lots of wind instruments. Um, I'm a string bass, and I'm here to just to complement the bass line. And a fine job you're doing too as well. I'll let you carry on. Now, let me speak to Richard on the trombone. How long does it take you to, to play with a band of this sort of standard? Mm, it's taken me uh, six or seven years now, since the age of 11. I started at school. Um, you go through the school orchestras and eventually when you're good enough you get an audition at the music school and then you go through the rungs of the music school. Right, do you get standard. to choose what instrument you want when you're at school? Well I actually didn't but uh, most schools yes you do. Right, well it's ended up in a good way, that's it. And a mighty fine percussion lot too may I just say. Oh, let's move up around here. Oh, thank you very much. Here we are, the floatists. Now, uh, do you not get drowned out by uh, playing in a band such as this? No, we don't tend to get drowned out. We're a fairly dominant section of the band. We play a lot of the um, solos mm. and the melody lines, tunes. Right. So it's a much higher pitch than the rest of the band. And there are ten of us plus a piccolo player, so we're one of the largest sections. Strength in numbers, huh? <laughs> Very good. Well, last year the Northamptonshire County Youth Orchestra came to Blue Peter before playing in the school's prom. Alan, why is Northamptonshire so successful at producing uh, such talented young musicians? A um, variety of things. I think, first of all, the good basic music teaching in schools, complemented by an excellent instrumental teaching team, which goes into the schools. Mm. And then I think the opportunities that the youngsters have to play in various groups, ranging from string quartets through jazz ensembles to full symphony orchestras. Um, in the 14 music centres and the Central Music School, which is where we come from. Right. And uh, also, I think, last but no means least, the tremendous support we get from our local authority. A very busy little area, and no small part down to yourself as well. Just be lucky, I'm not conducting you tomorrow. But good luck in the Albert Hall, I'm sure you will do a marvellous job and uh, enjoy the school's prom. Thank you all very much for coming in today.
Yes, thank you. Northamptonshire County Council ran a pretty impressive music service, but if you think that the members of this band are exceptionally lucky, then think again. In fact, the mo most councils in Great Britain offer similar services. County music services are often responsible for organising music lessons in schools. They loan or hire instruments to people who want to learn and run a number of bands and choirs. About half a million young people are learning a musical instrument thanks to county music services. Music services usually run a wide range of musical groups, from orchestras to jazz bands, recorder groups to string quartets and choirs, something to suit everyone. If you want to find out what music services your local council offers, the best thing to do is to ask your music teacher or head teacher at school. Many music services are having a tough time at present. Some might end altogether in the next round of education cuts. Let's hope that there will continue to be ways for young people who want to play music to do so. Well, we'll be back on Thursday when I shall be at a Bring and Buy sale broadcast live from South Yorkshire. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. That'd be brilliant. <laughs> and we'll be going behind the scenes and see the genius of Genesis in Nottingham. And there'll be more news of our appeal. Meanwhile, look out for your name coming Come up on. to see if you've Come won on. or if Come you're on. one of the 100 runners up in the bike ride competition. Come on. We've got 500 more names to pick, so oh, we okay. shall see you on Thursday. <laughs> Shove a big delve inside. Bye. Here we go then. See you, see you then. Bye bye. 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 Here's the first one. No, oh, the tight one from there. Walt Hammond Essex, well done. <laughs> ben Crute from Gloucestershire. Well done, Ben. I've got Ian Simpson from Gosford. Jane Ashley from Warrington, well done. Adam Duke uh, uh, from Nottingham. Alan Andrews from Hampshire. Oh, I can't read this one. Judy Jarvie from where? Perthshire. Oh, Perthshire. Perthshire. And Scotland. Oh. Haley <laughs> from Well, it would be wrong there, <laughs> Martin Bell from um, Inverness. Bernadette Wilson from Merseyside. Ian Aylett from York. Paul Swan from Cleveland. <laughs> Alex Cox introduces the original film version of The Fly, starring that master of horror, Vincent Price. Here on one in 15 minutes, the Lambeth Walk assesses the Lambeth Conference, which ended today. First, the news with Moira Stewart. Iran accepts Iraq's latest offer. The way seems clear for a Gulf War ceasefire. Mrs. Thatcher promises Campuchian refugees the killing...